so uh, talk about amateur hour um, welcome to another video but this one's a little different because it's really four episodes in one uh, you just saw uh, a, a quite a bit of um, hopefully hopefully distinct hopefully it's not moving too fast for you because I recorded three different episodes and uh, failed to turn off the mute the mute on my microphone here. It's really handy. Uh, you definitely want to have that ability so that, um, you know, when, when you're doing certain things, you're not recording audio that you don't need to. And, you know, if I'm saying really bad words, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, that kind of stuff. But, um, man, uh, am I, do I feel stupid in that I, I basically recorded an hour and a half worth of video for you guys and have no audio for it um, and I had some good stuff in there so we're gonna have to go over a little bit of what happened there now, the last episode that y'all were able to see I had just expanded this section out as you can see my city is really starting to take off a little bit here um, we're starting to get some high rises and not just some mid rises um, you also see that um, right here, and, and right now it's on cinematic view, but even when I turn the cinematic view off, most of these are not complaining about services anymore. I still haven't figured out exactly what services they finally got, um, but whatever services they needed, they, they now have. Um, my, I have uh, this, which I had already built. Y'all had seen this. This is still making money, and it's still doing well. I've added a couple of little uh, doohickeys there that make a... Uh, lumber there um, just to help increase uh, there was a need for more lumber uh, engineered wood or whatever it is and then if you notice right here I now have a, an entire farm I, I, I built a, a entire farm industry and that is working rather well it's actually making more money than this uh, I believe it's about 10,000 and if you look over here I also have some ore industry that I've started off. So it actually technically uh, starts right about here, but I have several things in place, and that's not finished yet. I, I was in the middle of working on that, I believe, uh, at the towards the end of the last episode. So uh, that I think gets you up to date on how the city is looking. I mean, let's take a a, a little bit closer look at it. Um, you know, maybe what we can do is follow a, uh, a car or something. Let's, um, here, we'll follow, we'll follow this um, garbage truck. See, it's uh, returning to facility, so that ought to give us a pretty good uh, view of things. I'll speed it up here just a little bit. And honestly, just... <laughs> And we're just looking at the back of this 18 wheeler here, but I still kind of need to be able to, to, to get in into the city and, and just look at things. Um, so one of the things that y'all missed is I did do a tutorial on how to do a, a bit of a, a truncated diverging diamond intersection um, that I had finished. And actually, uh, this, this truck right when I first turned it on, went through that intersection. But I will talk about that in more length in a minute here. Um, I wonder if there's a way to zoom out. I wish there was a way to zoom out so I could be like hovering above it and not necessarily like looking at the back of these, these big trucks. Not seeing much here. Uh, I'm thinking this is my, um, my expressway here uh, that it's returning all the way to the facility from. But that's, I mean, it's really nice to look at. Yeah, here we go, and we're about to turn right here. Yeah, here we go, we turn right, and we're to our facility. So we didn't really see much of the city there. But uh, perhaps we can uh, see where this guy's going. He's going to collect garbage. So let's see where he ends up going. Maybe he'll give us a slightly better tour. Um, if not, we'll have to, like, get into the eyes of a pedestrian or something. Um, but in any case, 
Yeah, I, I, I really had some good stuff. We expanded the residential on the north side of the town as well. Um, so that's this is pretty cool. We were right at the edge of town. Um, yeah, so now we're turning into like where I the where I had just built what I had just built at the end of last episode, um, and we're just going. We were going west. Now we're heading back north, and we're into some of the neighborhoods here. Um, now we're heading back south. It's nice to see some of this uh, area and got plenty of uh, open land still, which, you know, I, I like. I like these trees. These trees are huge. Redwood trees are so gorgeous to have on your map. Um, really adds something extra from the normal trees, I think. And we're going back to the facility, so I'm going to let them, let, let that guy go. But, um, yeah, so we just kind of came in here. And I think we did a loop somewhat like this, uh, and then came back and then back out to the facility. But um, yeah, so I filled in um, this space here uh, quite a bit, and it's kind of a grid, but it's not exactly a grid. It's kind of a, a, a mash between suburban and urban. And the idea is this road is gonna come out this way and this road is obviously coming out this way. Um, we have a nice uh, thoroughfare going all the way there. And what's going to happen is this is going to become a bit more of a regular grid. And this is going to be really the bulk of my my commercial residential and offices are going to be here. Probably have some more residential going up onto the topography here. And then most of my industry is going to occur elsewhere. Now, I also bought quite a bit more land, and part of that is that um, if you see the discoloration of the ground here, this is where all the oil is. So I'm going to start an oil industry right about here, and that's one of the next orders of business, um, so that I can fully diversify my industry. I want to fully diversify my industry so I'm making a little bit of everything and can really start to get into the higher level uh, ind industrial stuff. Um, I need to finish up making my ore. You could, I, I have oil as far back as here, but it seems to make sense to go it here right off the freeway instead of building all kinds of highway. Um, at some point, it also makes sense to connect this road, this express road, up to the freeway over here as well. And um, yeah, I think I think that's it. So let's talk about this diverging diamond intersection here. So here it is, and it's it's truncated. So it's not how you do it in real life. And the the way it works is basically, um, you know, you notice this has a bit of a weird curve to it, and that was actually that was me explaining something. But basically, um, when you in in city skylines, when people have to turn, uh, if they have to turn sharply. They're going to slow down more than if they have a very easy going turn. And so make having this come in like that, yes, when you're turning right, it's going to slow it down quite a bit. But when you're turning left, um, it's going to uh, barely slow down at all. There is some slowdown, but they it goes by through goes through pretty quickly. That's what I should say. I've also obviously got a pedestrian overpass here to bypass this so that um, these are not being blocked by pedestrians because I do have still quite a bit of pedestrian traffic as you can see here. Um, and what you're really doing is you're taking the traffic from here and you're sitting it up, spinning it across to the other side, to the left side, and then back across to the right side. Uh, and same thing going the other direction. And it, you know, at first it seems very counterintuitive, but these are this is a real life intersection um, in the sense, uh, at least the concept is. Uh, they do this quite a bit. Oh, I, I apologize. They do this quite a bit, and the way it works is basically this: um, you're eliminating the. And I, I'm going to turn this on to show. You're uh, so what this is. This is the. Um, lane connector and I use the lane connector tool. I'll do another tutorial because I had already, I had done one, but I will do another one. Uh, you use the lane connector tool to see where 
you to tell the um, cars where you want them to go. But it also it really demonstrates very well the fact that you only have really one intersection and a couple of and one diverging uh, section here. Uh, not diverging, but converging section here. And one diverging there, but so those are really the only two places where you're it's where it would be even possible for you to have an accident and even in doing so in both cases um, you're basically coming almost head-on with the other vehicles so it's really easy to see them coming um, in real life there, there's not a light here on the game but in real life you would absolutely have to have a, a, a stoplight here and so these guys would be stopped by these guys are going and vice versa um, also in real life um, this would be split up into slip lanes. So you'd have one slip lane here, and you'd have one that goes this way, and you have one that goes that way, and one go that goes that way, and then you'd have basically a diamond shape, and that's where the diverging diamond name comes from. It also kind of creates a diamond shaped here, so it's really like three diamonds uh, lined up. Uh, you can definitely look up some real-life examples. I'm, I might try and find some photos to bootleg off of the internet and just so that uh, you can see as I'm talking about it here but um, it is a very efficient intersection both in real life and in this game uh, this truncated version I find is uh, much better because when you do the real life version um, this section this cross rock right here come out to like right here in, uh, in in the game and out here and I find that to be just a bit onerously large um, to the point where it doesn't make sense. It's like a, having a highway interchange where really you're just having a, it should be just an on and off ramp. And uh, I find that the game's mechanics work just fine when you do it like this. Um, and, and in spirit, it is doing exactly what the diverging diamond does, even though in actuality it's shaped a little bit differently because of the game mechanics. So that's what we do there. Um, and a, a little tip too, um, so I used quite a bit of the uh, Move It mod here uh, to create this intersection where basically this road here, um, the diverging diamond part of it, is at ground level. It doesn't change elevation at all. And then these here are basically just sunken down. I just click on the nodes that I want to I press control and I can click on a, oh, I'm sorry, shift and I can click on the second node, a third and a fourth. I made sure that there were four nodes that uh, both sides, basically their nodes were approximately um, at the same location um, to each other. And then you can press page up and page down to move the roads up and down as you see fit. And that allows you to kind of push it down, create this um, shape without having to do a whole lot of uh, uh, work as far as um, uh, doing earthwork. Now, one thing I'm noticing here is this is kind of funky. So what I'll do is I'll raise this up, um, and it still has a nice, easygoing uh, slope there. And that's something I probably should have messed with before, and I don't know. Uh, it gives you a good example of what you can do. Uh, you can also move around nodes as you see fit. Um, you do want to be careful because it's really easy to get things to glitch. <laughs> and those guys are trying to go around in circles to follow me. Um, you don't want two nodes to be too close to each other. You want to give enough space. If you have two nodes that are too close to each other, it's going to start to glitch like this. And uh, you don't want that. You can also press Control z to undo a move. Uh, just with in the move it mod you can't necessarily do that in the game so if you delete something that's not going to be able to be undone but if you move something with the move it mod you can press ctrl z and undo it which is also really nice okay so looking at my agriculture here what i've done is i've set up all four crops um, i had run out of money at one point i obviously have plenty of money now um, so i need to really build these out so that they're making more crops but then here we have the large animal pasture as well. Also, you notice I have my, my main road here lined with the farm workers barracks. What that does is a couple things. I don't want um, 
turning on and off from this main road. This is kind of like the main artery here. So they're all turning off on the side streets um, and I, I'm not on these uh, roads either, but on these streets. So that's just a, a short distance to the nearest outlet here. And um, also have farms, uh, I'm sorry, barns located strategically uh, around and obviously they're full and I have them set to empty. So that's one thing to keep in mind as well is you're gonna be producing a heck of a lot of products here. Um, I might need to actually upgrade and create more barns there as well. So there's that. Uh, what else was, uh, I think uh, one, of the, one of the things that I did uh, that you'll see me do on the fast forward, but uh, just to explain a little bit, is I just, I added this slip lane and this slip lane uh, for the sake of the farm. Particularly before I had this uh, set up, all my farm vehicles were coming to here and because of the way I had this set up where it was designed to capture coming from that direction and out, uh, outflow going in that direction, but my farming vehicles were all coming from this direction and going back to that direction. So this didn't make sense because they were having to go back through my city and it was creating a lot of unnecessary traffic through the city. So just adding those two little slip lanes uh, alleviated that quite a bit. And you notice I do have a lot of traffic here and really what that's about is the fact that I still haven't upgraded this intersection yet. Um, and what I did basically to extend the life of that, it's, it's life is sadly coming to an end, but I used this um, lane connector tool. And the basic way you do that is you click on the node that you want to connect here, okay? And then um, you uh, usually when you when you do so let's let's see if I could find an intersection that it hasn't been done on um, that way uh, you can kind of see it the way you would actually experience it let's do something maybe find a traffic problem that we can help solve so it looks like I'm, I'm getting quite a bit of traffic here and that uh, is that because of my buses I think it's because my bus is here so that's one thing I needed to address. I need to address my buses uh, creating traffic. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, let's see this. Okay, so we got basically um, you have these little nodes at all the locations where you would be where the uh, vehicles would be entering the intersection from, and so you click on one of them, and you notice uh, the dots changed. So that dot, that dot, that dot, they all changed. All of the other dots went away and other dots appeared. And so now all of the dots that are showing, save the one I clicked on, are where the vehicle would exit. And I can make it to where the vehicle can go to any one of these that I want. But if I just stop there, the a vehicle coming from this direction will never go to that lane, ever. Okay, and if I wanted to undo one, and I say I didn't want them to go to that lane, I would just click right there again, and then I would just right click to un, uh, to exit out of that and go move on to the next one. So now I can click here, and click there, and there, and then right click. Now, if I don't uh, do anything with these nodes, even though I've done something with the other nodes, they will just use the default behavior. There's they they will use basically all available options. Um, also note, one of the things you can do is you can do U-turns as well here, if you want. Um, but basically this gives you a, a high level of control of how your intersections work. Now with this intersection, it's really not necessary. This intersection was working just fine without my intervention. Uh, so I really just did it for the sake of showing you, um, the tool and how to use it. But when you have, uh, places where you, um, and I'm just going to right click again and you notice all these circles came back up and so now I can click on a different one. So this is a great example of where I actually would use it. I use it a ton. Um, sometimes if I don't manage this uh, the way uh, uh, an on or off ramp interacts with the highway, it will cause uh, quite a bit of problems. And so what you do is you just click there. You want those to go straight, but I don't want somebody to come from this lane and go 
pull a Beverly Hillbillies and turn across the whole freeway to get on the off ramp, or on, uh, yeah, on the off ramp. Um, and there are certain situations where the behavior of the the AI will will create some funky behavior, and so I will typically do something along those lines to just make sure I, I kind of force the issue and make sure that they are doing it correctly. And you see, I've already done it here because otherwise, when people would uh, these guys would turn off. They would literally turn to the far side of traffic and then go, and so it would create a bunch up over here. Now, one thing you got to be careful is the reason they're doing that is because they know that they're going for a long way. So the farm vehicles, if we go far enough, you notice right here that farm vehicle went over to the middle lane. Part of that is because it, it doesn't want to turn. It knows it doesn't want to turn, and so it's getting out of the turn lane. But if I had also you notice I've upgraded this to three lanes. When it was just two lanes, it was moving over into that uh, far left lane, and that was causing a backup, and that was causing issue. So part of um, management, and, and I, I feel really uh, awful that uh, all of this great traffic management that I was able to tutorialize in these videos uh, was done uh, in silence because um, it showed quite a bit of good stuff there. That being said, uh, as uh, this... Uh, video progresses or as the the series progress I should say um, we will get to see plenty more of that so I don't feel too bad in that I know that I will be able to do it again for you guys and it, it will um, ultimately y'all we all will get a great hand on how I manage traffic and it, it's because of these tools that I'm able to keep a, a really great traffic rating um, where right now it's, it's, it's not that great, it's at 70, it says. And part of that is things like this. Um, right here, I have my, my buses are just killing me over here. Um, and part of it is that I might need to just go ahead and upgrade some of these roads here. But um, that being said, at some point in the game, part of uh, what I really try and max out is my traffic flow efficiency. I want that to be, I mean, the 70 is the minimum that it ought to be. If it's below a 70, I really have a major issue that I'm going to work on right now. Um, and really, I'd like it to be more like at 80, 84. Uh, I find it very difficult to get much better than 84 uh, just because uh, on some level, if, if you got better than 84, that means you don't have a lot going on in your city because um, it's just, it's just uh, my experience. Let me put it that way. So anyway, that updates you pretty well, I think, on what we missed. Um, again, I, I apologize profusely for my, my lack of um, acumen when it comes to recording these videos, but I do think I'm getting better at it. Uh, I'm able to do it in higher resolution. I'm, I'm able to edit much faster, um, and... I think I'm getting better at talking to you guys in a way that is interesting and not uh, trying not to bore you too much. I know some of those early videos might have been kind of difficult for you to sit through. Um, but I do appreciate all the support you guys have um, uh, given me. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And as always, like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, comment, and uh, always I'm up for constructive feedback just bear with me on uh you know i i record so many video episodes at a time that sometimes it will take me several episodes to get uh, your feedback implemented all right guys talk to you later bye